I've seen vehicles where we've tried to manually bump them out of the way. At the end of the day, if it's something that's, that warrants it, you could argue that that's why you've done it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're here at Corby Fire Station, I presume it is. I've literally just come to cross this road and then saw this aerial rescue pump appliance. Just putting his legs out. Just testing it, I think. But they've got the door open and I've never filmed a fire station really where we can see some action. I did film one in Wixton where we helped with the clothes bank. But it's not every day you see something like this being tested out. So why not have a look? A Vima 282 ARP aerial ladder there. Obviously used to get right on top of the fire rather than tackling it from the side. Even got wind speed barometer up the top there. The last fire station that I went to, yeah it is Corby. Last fire station I went to we saw um, a lot of dumped cloves around this area. So we squashed it all up, pushed it in to stop those opportunists coming and grabbing it all for themselves. But yeah, let's have a little look round while we're here. Bit of a training tower at the back. Some sort of training vehicle or an old fire engine from back in the day. Back there with a HGV, which I presume that lifts this container here. Motorhome, fueling station, and where the staff vehicles are kept. But what a modern station, eh? How nice does that look? And I doubt whether there'll be a fireman's pole in such a modern building like this. And now look, we've got the front wheels off the ground as well. So they really are putting this to the test right now. Got all sorts of bits that we're noticing. Night scan, so shine a real bright light at night for them to see what they're doing. cameras on the side of the appliance there and they've even got a camera up front mounted on the dash hi mate do they all have cameras on nowadays then like buses yeah. just to keep general safety for you guys it's, it's everything it's obviously part of the incident safety but obviously road safety Obviously, if there's an accident, then we've got it all on camera and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what it's for, primarily. It's more, it's more to do with road accidents because the size of the vehicle. Because I noticed you've got them externally mounted as well, haven't you? Like dome cameras on the side. Yeah, that's what it is. It's obviously because the vehicle is so big. So if you imagine, because the back end that's double steering on the back, the back end swings round. Heaven forbid it clicked another vehicle. It's one of them things that sort of at least we know what's happened. It's, yeah. more, it's more to do with insurance purposes than anything. Plus, to protect the drivers so they're more mindful of what their surroundings are. There's an internal screen. Oh, is there? But obviously, they can't reverse without a bank's person anyway. Right. But obviously, it just gives them an additional field of view. So, once you select reverse, the screen shows the rear camera only, does it? No, the, the cameras are on all the time. You can even have multi view, so you have multi view cameras or just single view. Um, Drive of preference more than anything. So you've got a single screen inside, but you can see all the different cameras if yeah, you wish. Yeah. And you can choose which one you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many is there? Uh, these, these four on average. Right. I know the new trucks we've got coming. I've got their, their, their cameras are better. Yeah. So I'm seeing more and more on vehicles like buses and stuff yeah. to cover themselves. Do you know if you know the front one? Is that real high quality? The one that's pointing forwards. It's all right. Looks a good one. I'm sure if you go to YouTube, there's loads of internal camera footage of some incidents. Right, okay. It's, it's pretty good. 
do you, you guys from Northamptonshire post your footage anywhere? No, no, not allowed. Just right. through policy and stuff like that. We yeah. Get um, jumped all over. Unless it's something that's been cleared through the media department and the chain of command. But, um, do, do you know if you ha- had an obstruction whilst attending an emergency yeah. and a vehicle was parked where it shouldn't, yeah. it caused you a big problem, yeah. you had to turn around or something like that, would you review the footage to try and get that person done? I, I don't really know. It's a bit of a tricky one, that, because that sort of then lands in the realms of the, the police and stuff like that. So should that happen, you'd probably speak to a, the, the officer. Yeah. The officer would tell you then what route it has to go down. I mean, obviously we have issues with people parking. We try and make the public aware, so just be mindful of parking. If it had been a vehicle that was abandoned or something, then that's going to land in the arms of the law, then is this a public highway? Yeah. But, um, so, so, like, if there was only one route in... Because yeah. I've heard this, this um, rule about new housing developments, they shouldn't have more than 150 dwellings oh, right. from a okay. single access road. Yeah. And that's so that the risk of you actually getting obstructed yeah. is limited to only 150 oh, houses. Okay. So have you never, never heard of that? I haven't personally. No, I haven't personally. But, um... so, so if you was obstructed on a single access road to a development by yeah. a vehicle... Yeah. Do you have the powers to remove it, move it out of the way? I'm not 100%. To be honest with you, I've seen vehicles where we've tried to manually bump them out of the way. At the end of the day, if it's something that's, that warrants it, you could argue that that's why you've done it. Yeah. Um, whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing to do, I don't know. But if you were the property owner and your house is on fire and you the fire service were bumping your neighbour's car out of the way... You don't cause no damage to it, do you? And it shouldn't have been parked there in the first place. Well, again... I'm not 100% on the law, so... But if, if, the, if the occasion arose where it's blocking you getting to a fire, it's got to get out of the way, innit? It's got to. In a perfect scenario, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a bit of a tricky one. Hope, thankfully, I've never come up against that, so... Like what rank are you? Me, dream manager. Oh, you are the manager? No, I'm one of the dream managers. Yeah. Right. Is there somebody hiring you, then? One station, yeah. Yeah. Probably. How does it work in rankings here? One station? Yeah, in general general to be a crew a firefighter crew manager watch manager station manager all oh, right so you are the station manager no i'm not station manager i'm a crew manager oh crew so manager i do apologize I, I can't hear it properly <laughs> so yeah i just go around i do highlight parking issues oh yeah 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 it's, it's a good thing can we, can we the, the problem is is because much years ago having a car was a luxury and then over time maybe you had people had two cars now you have people with their kids grow up still at home they'll have a car and these new houses nowadays either don't have parking with them or they have one dedicated space or sometimes they're parking on a street it's just it's just one of those situations yeah. is occurring. Yeah. it's not great and that's again it's down to the, the property developers to deal with planning departments and then heaven forbid if it ends up becoming a police matter it's just one of the things we yeah need. Yeah, it's an ever-growing problem. But yeah. do, do you know when the park sort of on the pavement and then a little bit on the road? Yeah. My thinking is vehicles should solely park on the road and if there's not enough room for a vehicle to get by, find somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, the big thing is, that is a, I mean, it's a big factor about it. The main way you've got to look into that is people in wheelchairs, people doing the school run with prams and stuff like that. You're forcing these people to potentially go out on the road. Yeah. It's not great, but again, it's... People don't like having to park their cars streets, streets away. We all think we're entitled to have a car outside. And but then they get on the treadmill in the garage and start running five miles. <laughs> but they don't want to walk yeah, it's, it's a minute. Good. Yeah, it's I think issue. responsible parking is a big issue. And as we go around as YouTubers and we, we highlight these issues, I'm even highlighting it to the companies where their staff are outside blocking the pedestrian footpath. And, you know, they are blocking the road as well. They're on tight bends. They're parking on bends. You guys struggle with bends, don't you? Yeah, it can be. It's just, it's just you deal with it as it is. It's the, the parking thing. It's just a sheer volume of cars on the road. And I, yeah. I don't. I don't really know what the quick answer to it is. No, it's just it's just raising awareness and uh, naming and shaming them, really, putting them in the spotlight so that they have to yeah, I mean, change their ways. If you look at the layout of all these housing estates at the moment, they're quite packed in, quite heavily dense, aren't they? And yeah. Again, if you've got family with two grown up kids and they've got a car each or 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like you're capped. Oh yeah, once you buy a house and you've only got a driveway for two, yeah. you can have as many as you like. Yeah. So yeah, you're just doing like a lot of training today, are you? Yeah, there's, there's two courses going on around the show. Right, well, I, I won't keep you up then, my friend. Thank you for the chat. It's been very pleasant. That was really nice of him just to spend a, a minute or two, or five, chatting to me about uh, road safety, really. You know, when you've got very important appliances like this trying to get to that emergency, you've got somebody down the end of the road who really needs your help, or you're going to be blocked by an irresponsible car owner and we've got a mobility scooter over there when people like this are buzzing around on the public footpath like he is right now he does not expect vehicles to be blocking his way you know they rely on drop curbs if he is now then forced to go down a curb it's very difficult for him so yeah i'll leave this one here guys corby fire station thank you so much for being welcoming and spending that time with me to talk about a few issues there and while they carry on their training inside as well give it a thumbs up for me if you have enjoyed that video and i'll see you on the next one guys bye bye for now